what an exciting moment it is to be going into a new tournament, to see a new track, to see new racers, and to see possibly a new format. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan. We got four of them back here. But as you can see, this time, we're only sticking to two lanes. Four cars, two lanes, and that's going to have quite an effect on each heat. As you know, each car is going to race in each different position, but sometimes they're going to start in the back. And sometimes they're going to start in the front. So a lot of different change-ups of things that will cause for some advantages and some opportunities. And it's going to be something. NASCAR 30 coming across with the first win, and we'll get going here. Let's look at our track. And we do have a pretty interesting track, I'd say, as far as the later part. You have that big banked hairpin that's very steep. You're almost 45 degrees in the axial tilt of each car as they go through it. And then you have that final hill, which is quite tall and causes some airtime. It's kind of a bigger version of the last hill that we saw in the, um, the previous tournament which caused quite a bit of problems. You see you have this one hill here, but it's big, so not a lot of airtime. Going to this hairpin here, big jump to the last hill. Airtime, NASCAR 30 off and rolling away, and he's gone. And there will be no chance for him in this one. Look at the jump, Infinity stays flat. NASCAR 30 was trying to find that outer line and flipped away. And he got the Bugatti coming in. In second, <clears throat> and the NASCAR 44 right behind, Heat 3. And you see that the scoreboard is kind of telling us where we're going. The two top cars are in the rear spots, and the front cars, uh, uh, the bottom cars are in the front spots in this particular heat. So you can see it's labeled each time. It helps us see where cars are racing. NASCAR 30, now out to a bigger lead, trying to get back in there after that tough miss. He almost catches the rail there, but finishes strong. And that's our best time so far, 9.9954. Someone keep track of that in the comments. 9.9954. We'll vaguely keep track of times here. Probably, yeah, we'll closely keep track of times here. It's good to see who our fastest vehicles are. 9.9954, already below uh, double digits in the seconds place. And, well... That's a pretty fast time. Well, look at our score. NASCAR holding on there with 10. Everybody else kind of in contention, but it's really going to depend on who wins this race. Infinity is knocked forward by NASCAR. Flips into the other lane. Goes back to second place. Hangs on. And no, he does not. No, he does not. And the Bugatti runs through the NASCAR 30 and gets to the finish. Look at this replay. NASCAR and Infinity. Infinity gets knocked away back to third place, and I don't think it's enough to move on, especially after the first place. Bugatti held on through, sped up, and crashed through the NASCAR 30, who was going for a spin. Moving on to the next four, and I'll apologize here. My voice is a little bit scratchy today. Um, I was a little bit sick this week, though I'm really coming out of it here, so... Next video, back to the normal smooth Brendan voice, whatever that is. I'm, hope, I'm hoping for that kind of characteristic. Uh, we'll see. NASCAR 5 has some trouble. Ford Mustang finds the way through. Oh, this is just disastrous. Disastrous. Do you see this? This is the jump here, and you have to be careful on the jump. You gotta be careful that you land straight. This is lazy racing. Turns late, and he's just skidding. He gets second place because he didn't keep himself straight. You have to be straight. Man, that, that, is, that could cost him the advancement if the other races don't go very well. Uh, it's absurd that cars are racing so well up through that hill and then just even after a good landing after the hill are not maintaining their direction through the finish line. That's absurdity. Ford Mustang, who won the first race by the skin of his teeth, holding on here nice and straight. NASCAR 5 hanging in there again for second. Um, back to what I was saying, though. I, uh, a little scratchy on the voice. It should be good next time, and 
<clears throat> it's just part of a commentator's life. You know, some days you have the voice like this. We all get a little sick. NASCAR 42 is going to DNF this one. Ends up upside down. He was a little off camera, I'd say. Jump was pretty clean for the Ford Mustang. You saw he got those wheels down, all four of them, um, pretty solidly. And it was just speeding to the end. 9.76. That's a new best on the field. 9.76. E3. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's get him out there. I am powering through here with you guys. Ford Mustang powering through into first place. Has not lost one yet after that debacle from the NASCAR 5 in the first one. This time the NASCAR 5 has a chance. He's in the lead here. Started in the front spot. Ford Mustang on the big jump stays in front. Gets knocked back. And NASCAR 42 has him down. 42 spins and crosses. 9.86 on the clock. Now, you'll see here, our best two times have come in the last two races, 9.76, 9.8, I think that was 8.6. Um, I mean, those are good times. So you really have some tough competitors in the Mustang and the NASCAR. The NASCAR 5 will be specific. The Ford Shelby and the 42 are not performing too strong right now. Let's hold on with them. Ford Mustang. Near side here with the NASCAR 5. They're already bumping into each other. NASCAR 5 is, is trying to nudge him out of the way. He has too much speed early on. He can't handle it. Ford Mustang staying ahead. Has a good berth between him and the NASCAR 5. Here comes the jump. Nice and strong. Ford Mustang goes to the far side. NASCAR 5 finds the gap. Gets through. Spins. He is not fast, but he wins. He will advance with the Ford Mustang. That is clear. And what a race this was. You see this jump right here? Ford Mustang curves off to the left. And there's a gap there. NASCAR find f 5 finds the gap. Threads it. And even with the spin, had a lot of time. A lot of time. And he will advance. <laughs> Tell you what, I always know what to do. And it, we're going to the finals here. I always won't know what to do when I get the the voice loss sickness. There's always there's a couple different times of sicknesses that kind of flow through my life. Uh, there's always one where I get a slight head cold, and then a day later I start to lose the voice. And I used to not really know that was coming. Now I know it's coming. And it's always like some sort of infection that I need an antibiotic for. Oh, close jump right there. NASCAR 30 loses everything. Oh, we're going to have to see that replay. Time is below 10, but not a new best. Do you see this right here? Oh, that's a beautiful synchronized jump almost. And the NASCAR 30, I think, got a little caught up on the 5 and kind of fell back, almost lost third place. But I always know what to do. Um, at this point, it's always some infection. I need antibiotics, so I go get... Uh, some sort of antibiotic and I, I tell them I go to the doctor's office and I say listen guys I, I've, I've had this so many times it's it's just give me the antibiotic because I need to get the voice back going as quick as possible you know um, but it's tough when, when you just lose your voice for a few days and you just can't even say anything and you might realize that I do like to say things Ford Mustang big jump clean NASCAR 5 staying in there and it's gonna be a battle between them at this point unless the NASCAR 30 really makes some strides Bugatti is kind of lazy right now. Now you know how it is. I got there to the office this time. It was like night. It was like right before they closed. And so they they, uh, they wanted to go home. So they moved me through pretty quick. Pretty quick to get me that prescription and get out of there. And so should be on the way to a recovered voice. Yeah. Maybe even by the time you're seeing this video, right? Here we are. Bugatti holding on to a lead early on here. Ford Mustang fighting back. NASCAR 30 really on his tail. Just trying to find space there. Wants to clear himself and have a shot for the lead. Needs to get it here. NASCAR 30 is locked in, boxed in. And he has no chance but last place. I mean, this is, this is where the two lanes really makes for some trouble um, for racers who did not take advantage of their chances earlier on. I mean, he's just stuck there. There is no pass. There's no move. There's no nose block. There's no opening. I mean, maybe for a second there, but not really. And so you have to make the moves when you have the front spot. You have to put it on. NASCAR 30 has no chance to advance here. Let's look at our numbers. 
10 for NASCAR 5, Ford Mustang with 11, NASCAR 30 with 5. There's no chance. It's really the Ford Mustang and the NASCAR 5 who are in there in this one. NASCAR 5, big lead right now. Mustang hanging on. Needs to do some miraculous things here. NASCAR 5. Oh, the late nose block is just to the side, and the 5 will win. And the Mustang will follow, but become up a point short after all the machinations of the calculations are done. 30 falls back. Bugatti nowhere to be found. And I think that's going to wrap this one here. Look at our time, too, as our NASCAR comes by almost under our personal best. Well, our new best, whatever. 9.76 with some decimals. And the NASCAR 5 deserves his advance quickly as we get started, and that is... There is a consideration, a thought on the Races and Fun channel that maybe marble content could be fun, racing some marbles, some tournaments in that regard, maybe some shorts. We don't know, but we need you to know. So in the comments, please tell us if that's something you'd be interested in, want to see, any ideas, or if you'd hate it and want us to never think of that again. Whatever way you want to go, let us know. Oh, there's a skid there and another skid, and the number five gets over. Oh, wow. There was that little length of track I forgot about, but still gets over in first place there. NASCAR 5. And we're finally kicking things off here pretty strong. Remember uh, last time, 9.76 with a couple more decimals was our best time. So that's kind of our baseline time for the rest of this tournament. Anyone who needs those decimals, I'm sure they'll be in the comments um, if you look for them. People are pretty good about that. So, we're in the day two. Remember, this is a very, uh, it's kind of a hybrid when I look at it. The hybrid kind of tournament. We have Mustang, 43, and Infinity, the other three cars. Um, because we have two lanes, but we have four cars. Normally we have four lanes, four cars, and then that wide section, or two lanes, two cars, and, and whatnot. But this time we we kind of shove them into two lanes for the for the reason of giving that challenge of racing from the rear spots. It's pretty hard. You have to make a pass in order to win. Like this NASCAR 5 here needs to make a pass, but he's just too far behind. And it looks like the Mustang will get across in first. Ooh, what's that time? 9.73. And we've broken our record already in this one. Now, I don't want to say anything too crazy. I like a sub-9 as possible, but I feel like a sub-9 could be possible with a really strong run. I think it's about the airtime and that jump and how you land, so we'll see how it goes. Infinity NASCAR 43, Mustang NASCAR 5. What is it with all the numbering? Oh, that's because the numbers are on the cars. All right. Sometimes you miss the most obvious thing, right? Infinity, Mustang... I always wonder how the people came up with the names for these cars who made them. Like, what's a Mustang? What was a Mustang before a Mustang? Who knows? Far side there. Mustang. And big jump. He skids back and forth. He goes. Infinity finds a line. Can't get to the gap. And oh, a little bit of a transitional nose block from the Mustang. Look at that. This is, uh, I think, a little bit lucky as much as skillful. Infinity had that outer line. And on the snapback there into a nose block, used that rail that was pitched inwards to his advantage to kind of throw himself in front of the Infinity and skid across. That was pretty good for the Mustang. Heat four we go. Scores are pretty strong for the NASCAR 5 and Mustang, who look like they will advance if it's not for the NASCAR 43, who, well, needs a first place and some lucky uh, finishes and ordering to make this happen. First time we see the NASCAR 43 in first place. He's down to the finish. He could be advancing. Where is our Mustang? Not last place, so not good enough for the NASCAR 43 to hang on, which for uh, what would have been a tiebreaker situation if the Mustang had been in last, but the Infinity dropped back there. We had a very strong race by the 43 and even possibly set a new record. I did not see the decimals on the first one. Oh, I'm kicking myself for not seeing those decimals. A 9.73. And that was a 9.7323, which by probability of possible four, uh, third and fourth decimals is the new record. But I'm not sure what the decimals were on the first one. I vaguely, cloudily, dreamily remember something a little higher than 
two, three. So the NASCAR 43 was not even advancing. I think set our new record. 98, really fast, clean jump finishes. Mmm, I think 9.8, so close. We have a very slow Corvette, might have hit something back in the track. And we're kicked off in this next set of heats, group two. I will say, I, uh, I always catch the third and fourth decimals when they don't really matter. And then, uh, oh, well, uh, I miss them <laughs> when they matter the most. I, this was a good race by the 98 too. Really shot out, showed the other uh, racers who's boss, and this is going to put some pressure on the rest of the racers who see that this guy is, he knows what he's doing. Very clean run. Corvette yellow, Corvette Cooper. I know that meant to say copper. I can guarantee you that meant to say copper because Cooper is not a color um, at all. But I won't throw any more shade at the editing. Here we go. Corvette, yellow, <laughs> getting out to an early lead and a big one at that, a little slow on the hill, inside line on the hairpin, needs a clean jump here to stay in contention for that record, good jump, skids, I think he's lost it, here comes the 98, not quick enough, oh, the Cooper uh, colored Corvette kind of got stuck there, kind of shoves betwixt the tracks, and this is not looking good for him, I don't know if we necessarily have a slow car in our hands, I think so. He got nudged there, which means um, the behind car was caught, uh, catching up. Uh, he's oh, well, that was actually not that slow. Nine point nine five. NASCAR 98 Corvette Yellow, the big players in this one, and I'll tell you what, they are close to cutting that record down even further. We'll see if we can go sub nine five. I think sub nine five is more than possible within the scope of this tournament. I don't know about a sub nine though. Corvette Yellow, 98. Finally getting to the first hairpin down that steep hill and it's nice and fast. A little nudge from the 98 and to keep the Corvette moving. A nudge again. He's gonna have to find a way to get past and he does! That's a Corvette Yellow! Oh, the momentum overtakes him! And he flips and barrel rolls and ends up backwards. Can't do anything about it. Time in the clock is slow. And the 98 will capitalize. This is a smart move as the behind car push him on that downhill right before the little airtime bit. And you can sometimes give them so much momentum, you don't know what to do with it. And you see that in like, you ever see someone uh, trying to run so fast that they overrun their entire body? You know what I mean? They, they get going, they get running, and they almost trip. They do trip because their, their body is like ahead of their legs. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. But that's what happened there with the Corvette. He had so much momentum that as he got over, he got like over himself. He, he curled over himself through that jump. Good nudge by the NASCAR 98. Holds through here. Skids. He's backwards. He's still fast. He's got it. Maybe. Yes. And we have a backwards finish from our NASCAR 1. And the yellow needs to get across and does just enough for points and our Cooper colored vehicle is not is not doing very well there so NASCAR 98 and the Corvette yellow will advance here I'm counting up points yes the NASCAR one was not strong enough in that last one maybe with a first place but not so It's a really smart thing what the NASCAR 98 did in that third heat like I was talking about. And that's something to look out for in future heats because, I mean, you, you always want to throw the center of mass, the center of balance off. as uh, Especially the behind racer, the, the rear racer, who has nothing they can do until it opens up as far as, pass, as, far as passing. So you want to find ways to disrupt the balance of the car in front of you, and that was expertly done right there. Into the finals we go. Heat one, Mustang Corvette NASCAR five, and our Corv, um, sorry, and our NASCAR 98. 98 on the far side, five on the near side. NASCARs lead the pack right now. They both got the front spots in this first one. Five, holding the lead. 98, winning it back, round that hairpin. There we go, big jump, and it's nice and clean for the 98. Gets to the side, five. Oh, he kind of, you saw him kind of twist there on the inside rail, and that lost some speed as he was finding the line. 9.6668. Oh, that is a devilish new record. Man. 
And as usual, I'll repeat it, 9.6668 is our new record on the course. Satan would be proud as he in implements himself into the races in front scene. Not really in the expected way, but uh, I guess he was bored today or something. I don't know. He's got to get bored sometime with all, all that whatever he does, you know? I mean, maybe he just... Oh, my God! The 98! <laughs> yeah, maybe 666 is involved today. That was brutal. Oh, I wish we could have a replay on that. 9.97 on the clock. I didn't even see who won. I was blinded by just such ridiculous behavior. I don't even know how he snapped off. I think he snapped off on some of this track transition. See how it kind of bows there as it runs back upwards. The 98 is in a big deficit. Oh my god, we saw a little bit of that clip on this angle. Man, that is tough. And then down the rest of the replay, actually our Mustang won that. And so things are shifted in a way where the NASCAR 98 is not in too much trouble. Wow. I guess I'm going to stop claiming or bringing up the name of whom I previously mentioned. I don't want any more cars to get hurt. 98 is still back out there. Looks like he's fine and ready for this one. Near side, we got the Mustang. Far side, we got the Corvette yellow, and he's holding on. He's starting to lose that ground. Around the hairpin they go. Mustang holds on. It's right down the middle of the five. Five finds it outside inside the line, but it's into a nose block roadblock. And the five took a terrible line. He had open space, and he went back inside. Oh, what a mistake. Back inside, just not the move there. Look at this turn in. I, 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 don't, I don't like that. I don't know what he was thinking. The 98 is now just completely out of his element. Only six points. He has no way to win. Mustang claimed another win. We'll see if anyone else is involved here. NASCAR 5 seems to be the only other car involved with eight points, but needs to get first while the Mustang gets last. He does have the front best line here, that inside line of this last hairpin, plus the front line. So maybe he can get out here and win. He just needs to push that Mustang back. 98 is on his back. Mustang is staying in second and keeps straight to finish. And the NASCAR 5's got no chance. Is that a record? No. 98 took a deep fall here. I'll tell you what, he was shaping up to be one of the best racers, and then things just went haywire. He got the curse of a triple number on him. And I'm sorry if I did that to him. Well, that will do it. Mustang moving on. 15 points on the finals for him, along with a NASCAR 5 from the, the first uh, video. So we're starting to build our... And we're into day three here in the Widowmaker Tournament. This should be a good one. We've had quite a bit of exciting races, I'd say, over the last couple of videos. Hey, everybody, by the way, I'm Brendan. A couple more NASCARs in there. Corvette Red. This time the color spelled right, and we have a Mustang. I'd say the dynamic of the two lanes but four cars. Some people have commented that it's been a little odd, but... A lot of different kind of racing because of that. NASCAR, a little nose block there on the following NASCAR. The 44 pinches on the outside. He shakes the nose block and finds the outer lane. That's pretty good. That was a very expert move right there. When you're stuck in the nose block and you got some time, you want to wiggle out of it and find the outside line because after you wiggle out of it, the other cars already face the other way. So we go 44 will actually come out on top there. But there's a lot of dynamic because of that, and I think it's uh, due to the the weird kind of opening up that happens at the end. You have this kind of long single lane section with two cars per lane here, and then some nudging will always happen through the hairpins, and then it opens up, and then cars from the back really have to make their pushes. There's a nose block from the Corvette hanging on and all the way pushed forward across the line. That's going to do him good. 10.3 on the clock. Still not the greatest time. But we're getting there. 9.666. Oof. 8? <laughs> 9.6668? I know it's 9.666, so unless we get another 666 up there, any record break won't be too much of a problem to decipher. <clears throat> 
but I believe it was eight on the fourth decimal. Someone in the comments will tell me. I think uh, someone mentioned writing on a paper. I'm sorry, I should have done that. Yeah, but I'll try to get this next one if it comes out. Mustang, big lead, and looks pretty smooth. Starts to zig and zag. Maybe it was a defensive move. 21 just behind. What's our time? We're still on the 10s here, so we have a slow group. And I'm not saying that a slow group means a losing group, in, especially when you get to the finals, but uh, it's a little bit harder because you don't have raw speed to rely on. You have to be smart. You have to weave. You have to really uh, clasp for uh, places. When you're not in first, it's, it's a little harder for a slower car. Heat four, and, and look at our numbers here. We got eight for the NASCAR 44, BF 12 for the Mustang. He'll be moving on for sure. And we have about seven and six for the NASCAR and the Corvette, the 21 in the Corvette. So we'll see what happens here. Really, NASCAR 44, it's his to lose here. Jumping over nice and fast. He spins, he spins. He's knocked forward by the Corvette. He was at a lucky block. The NASCAR 21 might have overtaken him. We might be in a tie situation. The 21's going to take it to 12 and the 44. Ooh, only 11. So our NASCAR 21's going to advance. Again, a slower time. Mustang brings it up the rear. Mustang and NASCAR 21. We can get her under our second group here. Oh, kind of an oddball group. We have a Shelby in there. NASCAR 03, Mustang and NASCAR 6. So we have some odd color choices. NASCAR 6, nice and dark blue, it seems, with a white front. I think that's Valvoline on the top hood, which is nice. Rounds that hairpin, looks towards the end here. How does the three handle it? Pretty good. And he's just got a lot of speed there. Let's see our time. Oh, we're still in the tent. <clears throat> we have slow cars right now. We have a DNF. It's a, I believe that's a Mustang. Mustangs have tended to be fast in this particular course, so still keep an eye on that DNF Mustang. Wow, came up the hill on his hood. Something must have happened in the hairpin. Maybe a couple weird nudges. Let's see. <clears throat> NASCAR 03 with five. Heat two, and we're getting going. For our side there, we got the Mustang holding on early. Ford Shelby on the near side. Oh, he gets pushed forward. He has a lot of room to run here. He looks fast down the second sector through the big hill and still has room. Mustang trying to find a lane. He goes for a nose block just to keep second place. Shelby goes out of sorts and on the nose block. Holds the lead through to the end. Terrible time, though. 11.2. And that's one of those times where you just get lucky. The Mustang was only going for second place there, just holding on with the nose block just to keep points going, and got so lucky the Ford Shelby just <laughs> fell apart. By fell apart, I really mean it. I, it's just completely lost movement. Let's get him out there again. Ford Shelby. And he's going to be in the front row again here for his second front row race. Turns on the inside line this time. Has a lot of room. He's just got to stay straight. Oh, a little bumping. Couple bumps, and here comes the NASCAR. Cannot hold on uh, to pass. And the Shelby is going to start. He's going to continue strong here. Now he's at 10 points. He might be advancing with those numbers. But NASCAR here is going to be at 11. You still have Mustang. Uh, within striking distance, just the six is out. I'm really focused on this Ford Mustang, who does have potential and speed, but it's going to depend on how he deals with the number six here. He's just very slow, so he's already getting caught behind. He just needs to outdo the Shelby, but I don't think that's going to happen. Shelby, even in second place here, big jump and is nice and smooth, zigs and zags. And does not hold on. Oh, he does for a second. I thought almost the six got his way there. But it won't be. Skidding and skidding and skidding. And there's the Shelby. Advances. 
Number three in the Shelby. Let's keep it rolling. Heat one. And we're going to roll them out there. Fireside there. We have the NASCAR, NASCAR 03 holding in there. And, well, we do have our Mustang from the first group in the finals. We do have the NASCAR 21 from the first group in the finals. But it's looking like the 03 is our dominant racer. 21 flips the 03. First to last. Mustang finds the way. We still have slow vehicles, though. I have not seen a sub-10. And... I, that's an in-air offensive move by the 21. It, we'll get a replay here. You'll kind of get a sense of the movement. So look at this. The 21 on the far, uh, the near side. Oh, actually didn't make any contact. I, I was wrong. That was completely an 0-3 uh, flub there on the jump. Just a bad roll. I thought the 21 from the angle we saw earlier had a little contact. I got a little uh, underside or a couple of side wheels and in a little nudge that kind of kept him rolling but no 21 was just doing his thing just holding on there and chilling and the problem was the three did not hold it together mustang now in the lead looking for another five right there tough jump for all of them it's all a metal tangle shelby goes roadblock carousel spinning snapping and the shelby's not even gonna finish that oh and it looks like the mustang is in a straight to move on. Two fives for the Mustang. He has to be stopped here or it's going to guarantee him a win. Look at this tangle here. And the Shelby goes like first almost all the way to last. Really second to last. Kind of spins through the other two cars as they try to shift out of the way and get to the end. And they at least do. Let's take a look. Eyes on the Mustang. If he wins, it's over. Shelby needs to put him away if he can. Far side. 21 already snapped out of it. Shelby just trying to hold on and keep other cars in the game. Here comes the jump. He's got it. Mustang spins. 21's got to find the line. He pushes, pushes. Can't find the line around. Big mistake there. He had an open inner lane. And the three is stuck. Ugh, man, where do we go here? We got a 3-3-2 three, three, of the NASCAR 21. That's eight points. Mustang. Ooh, he's got 13. This could be over. So the only way that the NASCAR 21 could win, and everybody else is out here, the only way the NASCAR 21 could win is that they win this race and the, somehow the Mustang doesn't finish. And then there's a tiebreaker that favors the NASCAR 21. Well, there, there's an opportunity for it. Mustang here in last place in the rear spot. 21, on the other hand, in the front spot and with the lead. So there just needs to be a DNF. Can we spot a DNF at all? Maybe the Mustang will DNF. Here's the jump, Mustang. He's pushed back. NASCAR wins, but Mustang finishes. Oh, that's a shame. That is our first sub-10. 9.87 on the clock, so we near that record. But the NASCAR 21, while he was good enough to win this race, he'll only go up to 13 points. Mustang will actually rise up to 14, and that's enough to advance. Good one for the Mustang. Stayed consistent, stayed strong in that finals. Two Mustangs added to our list here, plus one NASCAR. We'll keep things going and see you next time on Races and Fun. Imagine the frustration of fast cars who have to be in the rear position, who are just rubbing up against the car in front of them and cannot get past in those single lane sections. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan, and that's part of the game. Part of the challenge of this course is being in those rear spots, being behind possibly a slower car. As you can see, the Mr. Bushi was rubbing up against the NASCAR there and just unable to pass until it opens up. That's part of the challenge of being in the rear, and that's why it's so hard to win so consistently in this one. We have the NASCAR 01 finding the win. Mr. Bushi will go for a spin. And that will wrap our first race. Looks like, again, a couple NASCARs in there. Mr. Bushi and a Corvette. And we'll see how they fare. This Widowmaker tournament has certainly been uh, a joy so far. And it hasn't had anything too crazy. The only crazy feature it has that adds to some of the nonsense is that kind of larger hill where cars seem to definitely get some airtime and have to employ some uh, 
in the air mechanics to keep themselves running smoothly. Otherwise, it's a pretty straight up track. It's just the fact of the orientation of how the cars are in the starting gate. Mustabushi only leaves the track there. NASCAR right behind. That makes it hard for the cars to find placement. Here's the jump. Mr. Bushi right and smooths to the end. Zigs and zags and finds a way. Let's look at our time. And we don't get a glimpse right yet. NASCAR 01 will actually suffer a zero there. A bad DNF. Aiming, uh, coming just short there. Here's the cross. Nowhere near a record. Which again is 9.6668, I believe. 9.6668, I believe, is the number. In the fourth decimal place. We have not yet breached that time. And I remember it because it is the devil's number in there. 666. He was actively involved in, I guess, one of these races. Who knows what's going on. Now, like I said last time, maybe we got bored of whatever it is usually does. And wanted to hit some Hot Wheels racing. Big jump for the Mr. Bushi. Did you see that? He just looked graceful coming out of that straight down the center. That's fast, but not even good enough for a record. We do have a slow group. Look at this. <laughs> That's just a beautiful jump. Everything was straight. Everything was perfectly turning on the axes they needed to turn in order to hit the ground running. It's just not fast in the other sections. NASCAR 01 started strong. Ending not so, looking to find an advancement spot. He will get to start ahead here, so if he can get first place here, he will advance. Otherwise, the 28 will actually be the advancer. Rounding the track. Oh, the 28 has our lead right now. Far side, the NASCAR 01 tries to fight his way back in. He has that outside line. The 28 has the lead and maintains it. Yes! Wow, they both got stuck in a little slanted battle. And our NASCAR 28 manages to hold on. And that's expert racing right there. Again, I think it was not, it was more of an instinctive movement. Can kind of played off his opponent here, got to the middle, and just used momentum to his favor. Nothing special about any of the blocks he did. It was all just playing off the vehicle next to him. 14 and 13, they will advance. And now into the next heat, so the next group of heats. Honda Spocket, NASCAR 26, NASCAR 8, and the 16 Angels. And NASCAR team has been consistently getting one or two into the finals each time. And we'll keep it up. NASCAR 8 kind of gives me Lightning McQueen vibes, though I can't certainly uh, confirm that. Just probably a trick of the mind. Oh, there goes the 16 Angels. That looked good enough for first. Jump here was, I think, a little tough in the NASCAR. You saw he kind of went one way and then back the other. And the 16 Angels had time to catch up. Definitely won that race now that we see it from this angle. And we'll start with five. Uh, was that about 10 seconds there on the clock? So potential to maybe get into the nines. That's where we want to be. We'll see if that can happen there. Far side, the Angels. Got a nudge out there from the NASCAR and a couple more. NASCAR just running right behind her. That's many nudges. And, well, um, telling her to speed up. Here comes the hill. Slows down a little bit inside line. And the NASCAR finding a way. Maybe a gap on the far side inside. Nah, the Angels. Tends to speed up there. 10.01 again. Slow group. But you saw the Angels definitely sped up when we got to the open track. It's just those single lane sections that are hard on a lot of the cars we have today. That's going to hurt them when we get later on. But for the Angels, they might be able to still cheat their way through for a while because in those front sections, you're going to get nudged by the car behind you, and you never know. If you can capitalize on those situations, you might be able to hold on to at least some of the finals. Angel, again, a nudge through, starts to break away. You can see slower in these single lane sections, already starting to drop back, but she's going to burst out here with speed. Yes, she does. Oh, and then here's side the Spockets. I don't know what happened there. The Spocket came out of nowhere. We haven't really been able to mention this vehicle, but there was a lot of speed out of the jump there for the Honda. Oh, down the middle there. Kind of rammed Angels into the side. And the Spocket and the Angels looking to advance here. We might not get a NASCAR this time. They're both going to play in the weird spots. 
They need to stay strong, though, if they want to take spots. NASCAR 26 kind of out of it here, but the 8 is still in a big battle to advance. It's going to depend on how he performs here. Right now, he's breaking away with some massive speed. A lot of room to run. It's about the mistakes in this final sector. No mistakes. Down the center like an arrow. Angels will come behind and advance, and the Spocket only had one moment in glory. That's our best time of the day, 9.9. .9. And the 26. Beautiful green and white color, but that's, that doesn't mean anything if they're just going to come up short like that. Nine point nine. Into the finals we go. Heat one. We got Angels and NASCAR 8 in there. Mr. Bushi, NASCAR 28. The Eclipse. Actually, I should have been saying that from the beginning. Mr. Bushi, I feel like I always pronounce wrong, and it's not very easy to say. But the Eclipse knocks back into the NASCAR 28 a few times, sends him forward, but the 8 actually finds the lines to get to the end. Anything sub-10, no, very close, but not quite. See, look at how close we are to sub-10s there. That's 10.0, 10.0, 10.0. We've seen that a few times today. But these cars aren't fast enough to really burn the time down into the mid nine points. That might hurt them, whoever manages to advance here to that finals, where we've seen some incredible records, like the 9.7s and 6s. Send them out again. Far side, the Eclipse. The Eclipse, I feel like, just doesn't have the speed in these early sectors to really match up to a high time, even though as far as a dexterous racer, you got one in the Eclipse. Big jump coming here, Angels has the lead, and the Eclipse lost their wheeling. So did the Angels, but well, it was clean for them to the end, 10.1, 10.1. And the clock counts up. Cars just doing the best they can to maintain their speed. But they're just not as fast as some of these other groups. Heat three. Let's get a deal on our points here. Looks like our NASCAR eight and Eclipse are in the leading spots right now. The Angels actually tied with the Eclipse. So it's still close. It just looks like the 28 has kind of fallen behind. Angels and the Eclipse on the far side there trying to keep up. But that line is sunk back to third and fourth. And the Angels almost lost that to the eight. But the Angels will have an advantage here. I think it's very possible that they take it. It's just going to depend on where the Angels has to play from. Eight still in there. Only a couple behind. Actually, only one point behind. Who else is in the play? 28 is out. Eclipse. Still in there technically, but has to work from the rear spot. I think the 8 is the best chance here, working from a front spot. And look, already way out in front. It's going to need a mistake for the Angels to come back here. The 8 might have the chance. And yeah, down the center with buffering in between and the 28. That's going to do it. The 8 will be moving on. Oh, that might have been a good time. That might have been a great time. Did I see a 10 or a 9 there? Oh, here we go. Oh, new record, 9.57. Yes, we do have it. 9.57. I didn't expect it, but there we go. The 8 moves on and sets the best time in this tournament. Incredible. That's something to remember. Into day 5 we go, and we have half of this tournament's worth of racing left before that wonderful finals. Hey, everybody, I'm Brendan, and if you remember, a record was broken in the last video, unexpectedly by a NASCAR vehicle. It came out of nowhere. That NASCAR vehicle was doing no better than 10 seconds every single race that hit a 9.5 about, I believe 9.57, if I remember correctly. Here's the 35, skidding a little bit. It'll come across in first place. You know, the 10.7, pretty slow. And it goes to show you that uh, even a car who seems slow in a few races, if they get that good line and they apply the potential speed that they have, uh, a lot of a lot of crazy things can happen. 
Cadillac white, Cadillac red. NASCAR 35, NASCAR 91. This is the Widowmaker Tournament. And we're out here. I don't know if I introduced... Did I say the, hey everybody, I'm Brendan thing yet? I don't think I did that yet, so there you go. <laughs> if I didn't, you have it. Cadillac Red taking a big lead here. Right behind him, the Cadillac White looking. And still quite a bit behind the Red Skids. That was an opportunity for maybe a breaking record. The White almost catches up to overtake 10.5 on the clock. Somewhere in the comments, do us a favor. Keep us caught up on our record time. Just put the, all the decimals down there in the chat, whether there's a new one in this video or it's just the one from the last video, so we know. So we know to look there and see it. I'm calling on someone. I'm calling on somebody. I'll shout you out if you do it. Man. Heat 3. Let's get going here. Right now, scores look pretty even. NASCAR 91 a little bit behind, and now he's working from the rear in this race, so not the greatest for him. Otherwise, every car is still well within it. Two Cadillacs taking the Vanguard in this one, both in those front spots. Big jump. Cadillac Red smooths in and out. White finds the outside line. Oh, and he snaps in. 10.5 on the clock, even with the strong run. Cadillac Red was able to keep himself stable until that transition narrowing. Look at this narrowing. See, car on the inside line snaps in there, kind of turns it into a little nose road something. A little nose block and keeps him back. Cadillac now in position to run away into an advancing spot. NASCAR 35 still with the chance with a strong race here. It has to be smart. Actually, with the NASCAR 35 and the Cadillac both out in front, the Cadillac Red could struggle here and possibly not advance. Here's the jump. Here's the Cadillac White holding the lead, but the Red catches up and surpasses the 35. And given that, there is no way anyone but the two Cadillacs will be advancing here. Both NASCARs fall short of these other models. 10.4, not a great time though. Slow cars, I mean, they have to do something about that. That could be dangerous later on. Second group, let's see if we have some faster uh, potential here. NASCAR 4 and 43, we have an Acura, and out of nowhere, we got a little Faradox in there. I remember the Faradox because there, there was something with the Faradox. I, I, don't, I don't know, this is now two years ago, it feels like, in races in fun history. But I remember I used to bring them up all the time to reference something previous. If anyone has the trivia and lore mind to remember, he's really nudging up there, to remember why I used to bring this car up. He did something amazing. Broke a record or won a heat or did a full, full sweep or something or a big comeback. There was some reason I kept bringing him up, but I, I forget the lore on it. I'm going to need y'all's help. The big races and fun lorist. There's a 10.1 on the clock. Um, might be able to help me out. I knew I used to sing his praises. Honestly, looking pretty fast. Work from the rear there, and a lot of nudges on the 43. Now we get to see him in the front lines here. Already a nudge from the Acura. He'll get a wheel forward. The 43 hanging on with him. How do the turns look? He's going to get some speed as he goes downhill. Faradox on the near side, closing the gap. Now he's within a car length. Inside line, he's going to take the lead. Big jump from him. He's nice and clean. 43 down to third place. Acura finding his way with the Faradox will win this one and do it 10.2. Eh, Actually, not as fast as I thought. NASCAR 4, last place in the Timer ticks up here and just too quickly to go sub 10. Though remember, this can be deceiving. We saw a crazy jump in time last time. Here's our third heat. Faradox on the near side here playing with the Acura who's on the far. 43 now giving him a nudge. This is his chance to run away with another win and keep himself in the game. I think the Faradox has the most potential for speed. Acura, though, showing that maybe I was a little wrong. Acura, this is a fast run, but he skids away. Back to second and almost ends up in the third. 10.2 again from the Faradox. Worked really hard on that inside line, but gave up the GOAT. 
on this back straight. I mean, there was no reason to cut across like that. I think that was a, a mistake, an actual uh, miscue of his driving as opposed to a legitimate attempt at a defensive play. Let's get our heat four going. Acura on the near side, far side there, the NASCAR four breaks away. I think it's a little bit too late for him. Yeah, he can't, yeah, he can't. There's no way, unless the 43 flips off the track and he gets first, but that's not gonna happen probably. Now NASCAR four though, looking for a win. Acura snapped forward by the Faradox. Oh, wow. That came out of nowhere, look at this, and still couldn't go sub 10, but look at the jump here. Acura up, Faradox lands on top, he snaps him forward with such momentum, surpasses the number four, might have put the Faradox in some trouble, but no, will advance. And no NASCARs make it to this particular finals. Absurd. Let's get Heat 1 out there. And, well, not really the kind of ending I was uh, expecting. You usually get one NASCAR in there or something to keep it kind of even. Faradox behind the white Cadillac looking for a nose to pass. Does! Far side! Gets a run and he's across. 10.2 still. Still slow compared to the competitors that will be in this finals. But, dexterous. Smart and found the line when the white Cadillac was probably expecting a different type of unfolding of the back straight run. Faradox starts strong. Remember, he worked from the back in this one, so he has the advantage of two front races and already holding a first place. Faradox lights her on, comes out of the gate, has first place as the Acura nudges him forward. Seems like they're uh, at least friendly to each other out there on the track. Cadillac. Red Cadillac falling behind, but the Faradox here is going to decide to break away. He has a clean run. If he stays straight, can we see anything below 10, please? No. I mean, what's going to happen for the Faradox if and when he gets out there, you know, in the finals, and all these cars are racing sub 10 times? I mean, that's not going to be simple. E3. Let's take it all. Faradox on the near side. They'll buggle out there for a moment. And the Faradox actually drops back here. Acura now looking for a chance to fight his way back in. They're all against each other now. He wants that final advancement. Big jump here. Needs to stay straight. No skidding, no skidding, no skidding. And he is clean to the end. Almost loses it. Stay strong, 10 2 8. Acura back in the game. Faradox had two wins. Acura maybe can keep this up. Where did our Faradox finish? Not even second, third. Third for our Faradox. So numbers still allow for an Acura win here. Acura, 5 3 1. That is a nine point total. And Faradox with 12. So a first place. As long as the Faradox doesn't also get second here, it's gonna give an Acura a chance. Red Cadillac trying to do something about it. Looks like it's not gonna be very easy. Cadillac, Acura with the chance here, and the outside line, the Cadillac is gonna have something to say about it. Nose blocks inside, stays on it, another nose block, nudges. Faradox falls behind heavily, but the Acura can only pick up three points here. I believe it's gonna be one point short. That was a double nose block, went out, bounded off that rail and re-blocked quick, leaving the Faradox with our overall victory. That's gonna send him on with all these very fast cars that are going to the final. And I am wondering something. I'm wondering if we're gonna be able to break that 9.5 barrier by the end of this tournament. We're into day six, and hey everybody, by the way, I am Brendan. And we're getting closer to the finals. Three spots left, and the 9.5 barrier has not been broken. I said it definitely would be. I said it was very likely, at least. But we haven't seen it yet. We've been close. NASCAR 44 with a run right here. Cuts in front. Good block. That's going to cost him some speed, though. Uh, got the nose and actually the entire car out in front. 
I mean, that's the idea of a nose block. The idea of a nose block is not to just keep your nose there. You want to create force or create movement where you can get your entire car in front. That's a true cutoff. But sometimes you can only get the nose in front. It's just you're really pushing to really complete the cutoff. We have a Corvette, a NASCAR 44, a NASCAR 96, and a DeLorean. Obviously, the numbers of the NASCARs corresponding to the numbers on them themselves. That 44 looks nice, a nice deep blue it looks like with white on the front. 96 black with some yellow in there. Uh, Corvette and DeLorean look sleek and beautiful. DeLorean taking a chance at it here. Fast inside line. Will he hold speed to the jump? No! NASCAR 96, but he's spinning all around, and they're all in a bundle. The Corvette will get out of it. 10-9. <clears throat> all right. And that was just a mistake by the 96. When you get clearance like that, get down to that finish line. Make that happen. Kind of flopped around a little bit. It cost him first place. Heat three. Let's roll it. From the top, DeLorean. Ooh, falling behind really quick and actually sending the 96 back even more. Letting Corvette and 44 kind of get the run at it here. This could be a good chance to go sub 10 and see potential. Big jump from the Corvette, holding speed, kind of running up against each side though. He let the 44 pass and the DeLorean almost. 10-3, slow time. I mean, that's not good, man. That's not good. A lot of these cars lately, not as fast as our first few groups. Well, someone's advancing here. Looks like our 44 is going to lock that in. But who else really has a say in that? 44 has got 12 points, Corvette with 11. I mean, that's about it. DeLorean and NASCAR 96 really didn't put their best foot forward today. I think that's going to cost them. Let's see on the far side there, the Corvette running around the outside line, looking to speed ahead here on the drop, get it back, throw a big nose block, anticipatory one, and they're slowing everybody down. The DeLorean almost gets clearance, but on the transition snap, gets stuck behind the 44 nonetheless. Both Corvette and NASCAR are going to advance here, the 44. They did their dues early on in this set of heats and deserve that. Even though the Corvette kind of got uh, short-changed there. 12 and 17. And let's bring up our second group. Heat one. Let's see how it goes. NASCAR 37. 99 out there. Mustang and a Corvette. Mustangs are usually fast out here on this particular course, but we'll, we'll see. 99, rolling around the inside line, gonna jump through this big jump. Oh, not a lot of air time, must mean slow. And the Mustang almost catches up, 10-5 on the clock. Ooh. Can we get under 10, or is, or is something changed here? Maybe this is really the second, uh, second strings of the Widowmaker experience. And fun. Here we are. Heat two. At the ready. Rolling out there on the fire side, we got the Mustang. We now have some clearance and taking a big lead out of the gate. This could be an opportunity to really pull away. Mustang distancing quite a bit. Anyone back in there? 99 tries to push from the outside, has a big line to go through. And the Mustang, not a lot of air time, but looks like a good amount of speed. Can't seem to stay straight on the back straight. And we have a 10-5 again. The back straight has been just like, like an ice skating rink for these cars. All over the place, getting back and forth, can't get footing. I mean, pick a line and stick it. That's going to pick you up at least half a second. We have a DNF'er. Just kind of sitting there. Probably got hit or something. Collision. Eh, no, I don't know. Oh, just came late. And didn't have the speed. Simply not having the speed. And here we are, a Mustang. Skids his way very badly to the finish. Almost seems like a like a wild Mario Party game, you know, where the uh, mechanics are pers uh, purposely slippery 
to make it hard to keep your footing. I mean, that's what it looked like. Mustang couldn't get his, uh, his wheels down. Mustang again in the lead, 99 right up on top of him. Was really just sniffing him there for a couple seconds. Still with a nudge and a nudge again around that outside line. 99 looking for a place to cut by. He's going to spin immediately, lose all chance of second place, and even maybe third, no, he'll hold on to it. 10-1 from the Mustang, trying to bring it under 10. I actually believe that NASCAR 99 is one of the best racers we have out here in this video so far, but needs to perform in this last race to hold on to that lead. Good race by the Mustang, bringing that time down even further. NASCAR 99 will be in the rear this time, but also the Mustang will be. So they'll both have to push through some slower vehicles in front. Right now, the scores look like that the Corvette still has a chance in there. 37's out. 7 for the Corvette. NASCAR 99 with 10. Mustang with 13. So the Corvette could still grab second, depending on the race finish here. Right on the 99's in last. And the Corvette skids to first. Oh, the 99. Oh, the 99 just found a way to second. That's going to completely turn the points on its head. How did that happen? And the Mustang got flipped off camera in the back straight I don't know what the hell happened to be honest with you let's see if we can catch something in the replay let's look closely at this jump everything looks normal for the Corvette Mustang oh Mustang flipped on the jump upside down and then the 37 really didn't have the dexterity on the track to hold on to it with all the skidding and pushing the 99 actually was able to work back up and keep the lead by one point and get on with the Mustang, and deservedly so, in my opinion, to these finals. Corvette and the um, NASCAR 44 from the first heats, first group, will be out there to contend with them. Far side there, we got the 99. Holding on the outside line, going down the hill as the 44 ranges in from the far side, looking to speed up and catch, but the 99 has a break here, doesn't flip, doesn't stumble, and holds on for the win. And actually, that's our first 10.0. It is 10.05, but I like the uh, .0. That's going to bring us closer to hitting nines. Usually, we'd hit nines a little bit easier. We'd see some nine eights, nine nines, but we're just not seeing it today. No, well, last time in the finals, the very car who couldn't go below 10 hit our new world record on this track. So let's see if they can speed it up here. 99 on the near side. Fire side, we have our yellow Corvette finally peeking himself out. So look, seeing if it's his turn. To grab a lead. Oh my god, did you see the Mustang there? He might not even make it through the course. He just got nicked there. Oh, a tough collision. He will get through the turn. The 99's on his back and stumbled and stopped. The 44 <laughs> wow finishes and almost loses that. Our time is 9.9. .9. The Corvette sped up. A lot happened there, but I'll tell you the important things. Corvette goes sub 10. Okay, 44 almost loses the race as the Mustang catches up because the 99 flipped over, stopping the 44 almost and letting the Mustang, who was behind quite a bit, catch up here. Look at the catch up here. Swerves, swerves from the outside line and almost gets the line to get second place here. If he had stayed away, he would have. Now we got a toss up here in points. Mustang has to grind his way back. He'll have some front lines to work with here. <clears throat> Front line Mustang far side. Corvette hanging on in there with seven. Whip around the curve. Mustang down the lane here and falling behind the Corvette. Maybe the inside line can catch up a little bit. No, not enough. He needs to get first place here. At least try to. He can only stay ahead of the 99. What's our time? 9-7. Where is this yellow Corvette coming from? Suddenly, we are close to that record. That didn't happen in the first heat, but it's clearly some improvement here. 976. That was a record not too long ago. Corvette looking to advance here. Based on times, would deserve it, but has to play from the rear here. So we'll see if the Mustang can do anything about it. Corvette with 12 points. I think that's it. Unless the NASCAR 44 gets first place here and the Corvette DNFs, or same with the 99, there is no chance for a switch up. 
Here we go. 44 looking for first place. Corvette in last, but no. Backwards switches to front. Will he finish? Yes, and that will end it. The 44 has no chance. Corvette will go up to 14, even though 44 will get to 12 points on the 5. So close opportunity, but the Corvette wasn't able to be stopped here, even with that flip over the front hood. Unfortunate. Well, at least for the 44. Corvette definitely raced fast, deserves to move on, and brought quite a time to this uh, finals here. 9.7, pretty strong. Gotta, gotta love it. Subscribe, ring the bell, join the Discord, and we'll see you next time on Races and Fun. Things are looking hot. To day seven we go here in the Widowmaker Tournament. Man, only two spots left and still a record to break. Hey, everybody, I'm Brendan. 9.57 is about that record. We still want that 9.5 sub time. Hoping for it to come soon here, though. It's not looking overly likely. We had that one burst of speed from that vehicle about two videos ago. But since then, it's been kind of the same stuff. Oh, we got a car in the rail there, and the NASCAR 7 almost loses out the lead. Skids, but into like kind of a mistaken roadblock, and he'll start with five points. 10.8 on the clock, so a slow time to begin. I think we have our Shelby stuck there on the rail. Kind of got uh, blocked up with all the four of them who all entered this final piece kind of together. You see the jump here? They're all together and bumping into each other through that jump. And he lost footing on that rail. So we'll start with an unfortunate DNF, though. Seems like a fast enough car to contend here with the rest of these racers, so maybe there'll be time to come back when he gets to those front spots. Shelby starting in the rear once again on the back side there. Nudges all the way into the Bugatti and even shoves him forward. Now they're both kind of on a run forward way ahead of the other two. Shelby might actually be one of the fastest on the field right now. Just suffered a tough mistake in the first one. We'll see if he can get around the Bugatti here on the jump. And he spins and does not. And even the NASCAR 4 almost gets around. Could not find a, a lane. He looked for the left lane there and could not get it. You might see it in the replay. You see the Shelby will come over here and kind of spins out to the right and leaves room and the NASCAR looked to the left but was blocked. Yeah, that's right. So just the, the wrong lane. He wanted to really probably go outside, but I think would have guessed that way too in advance. Would have been luck anyway. Heat three. Now we get the Shelby at the Vanguard here along with the Bugatti. I think the two fastest cars we got out there, the Shelby is getting carried a little bit, pushed by the NASCAR 7, and down the hill he goes, Bugatti neck and neck with him, Shelby takes the lead by a little bit, going around that hairpin on the near side, big jump, and the Bugatti takes back the lead, they are neck and neck for a second, Bugatti spins and leaves second place. That was an odd turn there, later in that back straight. We'll see it again in the replay, that's our fastest time of the day, 10-4. But the Bugatti had that, I think, just lost control with all the speeds. He had down the left side, nicked off something, and just went for a weird 180 across and enveloped the Shelby on the other side. Gave him a five and a chance to take this one. Eight four. Shelby with eight points there. NASCAR seven, actually, believe it or not, with eight. It's the Bugatti with uh, 11, who's definitely going to advance here. And the NASCAR 4 is not necessarily out of it, though he doesn't seem to be having much luck here. Shelby way in front of the Bugatti. If he wins, he's moving on, and he will. He won't beat out the Bugatti, but the NASCAR 7 will not be moving on. Fastest time of the day at 10.0, so only .5 off that record. Shelby. And uh, it's been fast. After this, ever since that DNF, really sped things up. Actually had the most wins on that group. It was the Bugatti who was a little more consistent with a five and three threes. Now we go to heat one of the next set. Maybe we got some faster vehicles here. Let's see what we got. We got the what four two, the NASCAR four, the speed bump, and the NASCAR one. 
Looks like our NASCAR 1 is uh, the fastest right now. I'm curious about that speed bump when he gets to the front spots if he's going to be trouble. NASCAR 1, big jump, takes it. Not a lot of air time, but enough speed, I think, to hold it through. There you go. And 10-0 again. I think a little slower than the other 10-0. I don't remember the 8 there. This tournament's been a fun one, I'll tell you. The track design in general, pretty astounding. A lot of hills, hairpins, and I think that big hill at the end is tough. You're not getting as much air time off of it as that tiny hill from a couple tournaments ago, but you are getting some air time, and in general, the hill, you're coming out with so much speed. It's certainly a joy for these racers. Fast races, about 10 seconds, I mean, these are good ones. Speed bump taking over this one. I told you he'd be fast. Runs out here. The 4-2. Finding the lane on the inside. Not fast enough to close it in. We got our first sub-10. 9-9. 9-9-7. Look how the track shakes as the cars whip around it. And it'll slide right over. Look at our score. It's pretty even. Any car still in the game. They're going to have to pick it up here. NASCAR 1 still with the advantage. Speed bump out in front and nudge forward to take over that lead. The 4-2 not showing anything but, uh, well, lack of speed out there right now. But on the inside hairpin, the 4-2 tries to fight back in. Cannot get back into it. NASCAR 1 finding a way. The speed bump is passed. Somehow passed by the 4-2. I don't know how that happened. He didn't have the speed, and then all of a sudden, the speed bump kind of dropped back here. We'll see in this replay. The overjump, good air time on the speed bump. But what happened? Yeah, a lot of zigging and zagging. And the 4-2 just had an, a, a straighter line to make it work. On to Heat 4. Far side there, the NASCAR 4. Near side, the 4-2. Down the outside, 4-2. Ooh, grinds his way, trying to hold on to the lead. It's inside line for the NASCAR 4. He's going to get up by a length, and the spin from the 4-2 knocks back the speed bump. And that might put him in some a difficult situation. I don't know if the speed bump made it through. The 4-2 held on for third. The speed bump only second. I think that's good enough for the 4-2 to actually usurp that. And we have the NASCAR 1 flipped over. So I don't know what the score is about to represent. But things really got shaken up in this last one. See, he was on his back for a while. And the 4 actually won that. Kind of an unexpected win. <coughs> Sorry. And the 4-2 and the speed bump advance. That's unexpected. And the, actually, the NASCAR 1 got nowhere. Well, we've seen a couple sub-9s today. We've seen in the finals a car just break out of nowhere and go .5 below, but not the most likely thing. Speed bump maybe looking to do that. Big lead so far. Around the outside, hairpin staying fast with the 4-2. Ooh, finding a way to stay in front here on the inside. Let's see if he can have a clean back straight. He is having a very clean back straight. This could be big, maybe even 9-7. No, that's 10 flat. It looks super fast. <clears throat> but it wasn't fast enough. Fast enough to win, but not to break a record. Bugatti. And you see a lot of flipped cars today. I think that's our third one here. And that's a bad time to flip out. The last car who flipped over in the first race won. So we'll see if the Bugatti can turn things around. Eyes on him. Starting with the rear spot, he'll flip to the two front ones on the next two races. Bugatti, backside there, already pushing on that Shelby to get ahead. That sounds about right. Bugatti's a, one of the faster vehicles we have here. I think the best shot for going towards the record will be Bugatti in the front row. Big jump, speed bump, stays with it. Bugatti breaks away in front of the other two. And hangs on. 9.9 .9 on the clock. And somehow the Shelby got flipped over. I don't remember that. 
Let's get a look at him, and, and the replay is going to be telling here. He straight flipped. Oh, through the turn. Did you see that? He flipped the lanes and then got knocked over. The 4-2 looked very bewildered. And he still couldn't fight his way past him there for like half the rest of the track. Had to really push for lines. And that's two DNFs here in the finals. Go to Heat 3. Let's release it. Bugatti. Shelby in the front. Bugatti looking to break records. Looking to get into the sub-9. Stay fast here. It depends on this next couple of sectors. Bugatti holds that lead after that first hill. Still a big lead. Needs a clean jump here. Stays clean. Not a lot of air time. And is fast, but turns. And that can't be good. That's 10-1. And see, I just don't think we have a fast enough car for this. I mean, even with um, a better execution, I think we're only getting to 9-8. This is one of those times where I would be very surprised if, it's a, if in this last race someone goes near the record. Heat 4. Heat 4 coming out. This is it. Look at our Bugatti. That's 8. What 4-2? That's 9. But the speed bump has 11. And the speed bump is in the best straights, but needs to just finish here. Probably not last. Let's see. Jump off. The 4-2 needs to win this. Bugatti's going to take it. And he might out. No, the speed bump finds a way around. He's going to take it. 9.95. Speed bump is the best there. Recovered. And we have another flip over from the Shelby. He's going to take two DNFs on this course. Hand back to him. And he is stuck there again. Final replay. We've got a chance of how he's doing this. Didn't leave the lane this time. Just kind of barrel rolled on the jump. Needed to stay in control there. A lot of lack of control with the group today. But we are getting towards our end groups, which may not be as strong. The Bugatti is going to win with 13 points. Moving on. One more spot to fill. And then comes our big finale. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe. And it's finally time for day eight here at the Widowmaker Tournament. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan. One more spot left to fill. One more spot left before the finals. And we will see who is the best at this course. Big shout out to the guy in the comments who's been putting the top five fastest times over the course of the tournament. Loving him. Definitely check that guy out every time you watch these videos, get an update. Uh, where our top five times are. 43 is going to take it over the arch here. And speed to the finish pretty fast. This could be a good time. Benchmark for the day, 10-1, I guess. But, um, so that's been helpful. 9.57, remember, is our record. 9.57. And we're hoping to break it. We're hoping to go sub 9.5 on the tournament. We have a couple more videos for that to happen. It's good to be back here. NASCAR 75, the 43 Formula, but I still don't know how to pronounce that with the 8 in there. And then Batmobile is our cars for the day. So, get used to it. Formulator? Formulator? I'm gonna say, I think that makes sense. Formulator. NASCAR 43 taking a big lead once again. Big jump here almost. Spins axially and zigs and zags a couple times and gets over the line pretty fast. But that will be actually slower than the first race. and But he'll still have five points to his name. I'm noticing that. These back groups, not as fast. We're not getting that kind of speed that uh, we were getting in the middle groups. So we're not even getting sub-10s. 75 is way behind there. Two ones. But uh, we're all even there. Look at that. Two fives. Um, I mean, two of the same number for every vehicle. That is clean. Let's see how it works out this time. NASCAR, to keep that five streak going, needs to come from behind here. It is possible, but it's not as easy. We haven't seen any sort of partial sweep even, but he's off the track for a second, loses all the speed. He's now in the back. Here comes the Batmobile. The nudge killed the 43, and the Batmobile is going to come across at 10-1. No, oh, sorry, that's the formula. They look very similar out there. The Batmobile is actually coming in third here, getting another two. And we have... There's a 75. Where's our 43? The 
See, that's the formula coming across there. They have a very similar shape from the front side. So the formula comes across in first here, and then it's the Batmobile after the uh, 43 who managed second. That's the thing about two thin black cars like that. In the commotion, they can all get lost. Formulator. Looking to take things back here, could even it up with the 43 if he wins this one, but working from behind. Batmobile starting off a little slow, has to get nudged forward. 43 also in the back this time, losing that individual sweep possibility. Which is just so hard to do in this course, considering you have to start from behind. You have to do so many passing jumping jacks to make it happen, but the 43 is going to do it on this one. Get 5, the 75's way out. That's 10-3. The, the 75 just didn't have it today. Every time he came off that arch, just made some sort of dive to the wrong side and started spinning out. It's amazing he finished. So, our NASCAR 43 and the Formulator will advance after that set of races, and we'll all do the second group. Heat 1, we got a Corvette Ferrari, NASCAR 1, and NASCAR 7. Actually, the 7 there on the... The, the white car actually looks a lot like a one as well. It's kind of in between. It's hard to tell. But, uh, I don't know. Here comes the one. In the lead right now. Up on the Corvette a few lengths. Who rounds the turn pretty nicely and spins a little bit. Here comes the Corvette on the near side. Oh, all tangled with the seven who passes. A little revolving door action and the Corvette comes up a little short. Ferrari looks like he's stuck back there. I'm going to get some more DNFs today. There he is. Good action on that jump there. Came in the near rail and then popped back out. Opened the lane, but the Corvette just couldn't get in there. Next race here. Heat 2. Front car is the 7 and the Ferrari. Seven comes out. I mean, that might be a one. I don't know. The, the, se the little seven line should be a little longer, don't you think? Right? I mean, usually a seven, the seven line, the, the horizontal seven line is like, what, half the distance of the bottom big line? Here comes the seven to win. That's fast. And we still not sub ten, though. Uh, I just feel like, I just feel like it should be a little bit longer. I mean, I think half sounds about right. Yeah, I'm a, no, but I guess it has a seven angle. See, the angle between the horizontal and the, and the I guess the half vertical line is, is, is seems very seven. Unlike a one, where it's either that, that little tick that's very, very angled, or it's just kind of straight, so. I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. I think it is a 7. It's just not a 7 I like to see. Here we go. Big jump here from the Corvette. He's fast down and nice and smooth. This could be a good time. Bounces off a couple of walls and still doesn't get sub 10. Yeah, these cars are just not holding up into those sub 9, uh, sub 10 times. There's the 7, by the way. Upside down, it certainly looks more like a 7. Just the font, I guess. Not that much time to get down to 9.5. It's just it's just dependent on the, the back straight and the start out of the gate. Let's see if anyone can get a good boost. Corvette and the NASCAR 1 are in the front this time. NASCAR 1 gets a little nudge out of the gate there. Continues in stride with the NASCAR 7. Almost gets stuck there in the turn. Gets out of it nice and fast. Corvette pushing up on the far side there, but just doesn't have the acceleration to get it. NASCAR 1 staying with it. Turning a little bit. See, he's turning so much. The Corvette's going to pass and almost a 7. 10.2 Two, uh, is our time. And that's going to still give the NASCAR 1 a shot in the finals here. But barely. What killed the seven is that DNF. Um, couldn't have that happening. To the finals we go. Heat one. 
We got the formulator back along with the 43. See how they take to the course here. 43 again, stretching out an early lead. I mean, he looks faster than the other vehicles, but where is that speed down the back straight to uphold him some sort of time under the 10 second mark? It's just not happening quite yet. Here's the jump. It's nice and clean, but he spins immediately unclean. They're all stuck together. The Corvette gets pushed back a place. 10.65 is terrible. Not the kind of time you want to see from a finalist. And see, that's what happens when you get pushed together like that and you're stuck in that diagonal position. It's very hard to have controls. Corvette got shoved back when they straightened out. That's the danger of the nose block, by the way. If you get pushed out of the nose block, because of the way your car will straighten out from that diagonal position, you will get pushed back a little bit. You'll go a little bit backwards. The only way to get out of a nose block and get in front is if you're getting out of it yourself with the speed that you're trying to get from it. Here comes a lot of bumping. The 43 all together and the Corvette loses again a place. 10-8. How slow can we get? Maybe is the question. Here's the jump. And it wasn't good for either car. The 43 spun out on it and the Corvette kind of got knocked around a little bit. And they were all getting pushed. The 43 was just a punching bag for the, the cars in the back who ended up switching a couple of places for the Corvette. Heat three, and this will kind of decide what our last race is going to look like. Two fives for the 43. So someone else has got to win here. The 43 is going to take it. This would be a great comeback win if he manages to make it happen. He's already in second place, though. The other two vehicles in this one not pulling the speed. The Formulator has just lost it all speed-wise. Here comes the 43. Huge jump off the arch. Pushed up by the Corvette, but can't make the win. And now we're in some trouble here. The Corvette did not get two second places in his first two races. So even a win here is not tying or winning unless the 43 drops back. So we'll see who he's behind in this coming race. 43. And all he needs to do is finish second or first to win. See STP on the 43 there. Sounds like standard temperature pressure, I'm not sure. 43 already making statements there with an NASCAR 1 pushing him out for a space. Corvette's just too far behind. He has to work from the back on this one. Not an easy race for him. The 43 stuck in second, and he's going to hold in for the win. And that's our first 9.8 coming from the NASCAR 1. I don't understand how it turns around like that, but the NASCAR 1 is going to bring our only sub-10 of the day. 0.3 off the record. And that will end this one pretty nicely. The 43, in short order, takes that one nice set of finishes. Nothing below second there. Rounding out our finalists. That's going to do it. We'll see you next time for the finals on races and fun. Familiar faces, record setters, all here tonight at the finals for the Widowmaker Tournament. Hey, everybody. I'm Brendan, and we'll see some old faces here as we head all the way back through the best of each of our eight days to send him out today. You see the Faradox there, remember them from a while ago, maybe video three it might have been, NASCAR 8 and 43, Mustang in there. I think all the way back from video one. So we are all over the place here. Should be wonderful here. 43 is gonna take this first one as the Faradox drops back a place. Oh. 9.9 .9 on the clock. Remember, our record is 9.57. If you go to the comments, some guy's been posting the top five, so you'll get to see if anything changes over the course of this finals. But if anything's going to happen, it's going to happen in this finals. This could be a time to break some records. Let's, let's, uh, let's see how it rolls out. Into Heat 2. And we do have the 43 starting very strong here. But a lot of chances for other cars to take over. The NASCAR 8 really nudging on the 43, giving him some momentum, actually, trying to push out in front. See, this is a strategy. Get out in front with the NASCAR 8, trying to make space so that he's front of that other lane and switch over. Faradox does manage to get by. He spins. Faradox pushes through the 43. Oh, and the 43's left to last place on that 10-2 on the clock. 
That's, that's higher level racing, to have the momentum and strength to push through another vehicle. Usually you knock into them and all hell breaks loose, but look at this. Push is right through, nudge, nudge, push, and the 43 loses everything in one straight shot. Five and one, the 43 still in it. A lot of room to race here, but the 43 is going to work from the rear spots now, so not going to be as easy to make things happen. 43 should have capitalized when he had the chance. Faradox now looking for another five here to put this out of reach and ensure himself a spot to advance. Mustang on the far side there working with it, but driving a little slow right now. Shove back the eight on the first hairpin. Let's see the Faradox. Come to this hairpin here out by many lanes. 43 trying to get back in there looking for a first place. He's playing for second. He's almost got first, but down to third as he went the wrong way. 9.9 .9 is the NASCAR 8 finds their first win of the day. I mean, th this back straight play has been very complex. Faradox got stuck in there, a little sandwich action. Speed was off, and now we're all over the place. Heat four. Two are going to advance here. I couldn't tell you which two. We have 10 for the Faradox, 11 for the NASCAR 8, and the NASCAR 43 is still in there with 8. So actually a chance that he can get out in front of the Faradox here. Let's see, he needs a first place here. Almost jumps off the track there. Did you see that? He's right behind the 8. Here's the jump. They both have a tough jump. 8 is a little bit in front and trying to hold on. He's nudged, nudged. But the Faradox can't stay in line with the 43, and they're going to tie. Look at this time on the clock, 9-9 nine, nine again, and we have to go to a tiebreaker. NASCAR 8 paid his dues, very strong race set, and he's going to stay in there. But what about this tiebreaker? It's the 43, it's the Faradox. Far side lanes. Holding in there the 43. Around that inside turn, and it looks like the 43 has a big lead right now, but the Faradox is going to have an inside line in this next hairpin. Maybe he'll come back a little bit. It's not that close. 43 almost spins out. Faradox has a lane in the near side. Can he find it? No. They snap back together, and with a 9.9, .9, you're going to have the advancement of the 43. Well done. He'll come across there. Not the greatest time. Still no records yet. Well, he's not going to advance yet. He's got to win the two out of three. They have set this in a kind of a new rule race in front. We didn't used to do this here. Sometimes they get a little mixed up. But yeah, we do have best two out of three for the tiebreaker situation, which I believe is fair. But the Faradox, again, falling back here. The 43 holding on. He spins out, but he's going to stay in front. He's going to stay in front. 9.9 .9 on the clock. He could have actually gotten down to 9.6, I'd say, if he didn't have the spin out and stayed clean, but could not stay clean. Sixteen and eleven. Their NASCAR is going to advance with the tiebreaker win. Faradox is going to have to go home. Heat one of this next group. We have Corvette Mustang speed bump and NASCAR five. Remember that speed bump was a problem in the race he had. It's the NASCAR five though, who was generally, I believe, generally slow in his heat until the end, where he just burned up a new record, I believe. That is the vehicle in question here. Let's see if we can keep it up. NASCAR 5 looking pretty fast right now. Pretty clean jump. Got a little bit off to the side. Speed bump dropping back to second. Nudge forward across. We're at 9.8. We're slowly cutting that time down. There's not a lot of time for breaking records. I want to see it. I want to see it. I mean, I mean, I get out here at the start, and I make a claim. Like, there's easily going to be a sub 9.5, and we just can't get there. Like, my predictions on that have been faulty lately. I have to be a little more conservative with them in the future, maybe. But I still have hope. It has to be a fast, all-around race with no mistakes. It's about that jump. You can save a couple tenths by having a clean jump and landing. Let's see if the NASCAR 5 can do it here. Way out in front. Gets a nudge there from the speed bump to keep momentum. Around, and the speed bump still behind him with some nudge. Nice clean jump. He's shot forward. Momentum. This might win the new record, and it does not. So very close. 9-7. 9-7. Even with, I mean, he jumped forward quite a bit there. Mustang's going to lay on his back there and get nothing. 
Look at the snap forward. He really shot him forward a whole length, but still wasn't enough to pick up a record. 9-7 is good enough probably for one of those top five times, though. We'll see what the comments say later. In the heat three, things will start to get serious now, especially for our gray Mustang, who needs a first place here, needs to reinstate himself if he wants a chance to move on and see if he can do it. NASCAR 5, pretty strong right now with two first places. All he needs to do is stay in his lane and not do anything too stupid, and he will advance. Gray Mustang looking for a first place around that outside line. Oh, got the yellow Mustang in there, and a good nose block into a bad roadblock spin, and the Mustang's going to win. He's back in it. 9-9 nine, nine on the clock, and a Corvette, sorry, the one who had all the nonsense, is going to drop back and probably put himself right out. He went for a dangerous move there, trying to lock in the win by making a, a defensive play like that, but maybe not the right time. Should have stayed fast and straight. Now we got three threes from the speed bump. That's nine. Mustang with seven. And what about an NASCAR five with 11? We're all over the place. So the Mustang still in it. Corvette's out. Corvette, well, not necessarily, but pretty pretty much out. We do need some crazy scenarios. Mustang needs to win, though. Look, not looking good. Speed bump is so fast. This could do it. New record capabilities way out in front. Our time is 9.50. New record on the clock, but still no sub 9.5. And that 5.7, which was used to be 9.57, was now shoved to decimals 3 and 4. 9.5057. Is our new record, and our person in the comments with that will have a day. Look at how, see, it was the speed. You could tell he was going to set something new. The speed out of that last jump was so clean. Our gray Mustang on his back, and our NASCAR 5 and speed bumper advancing. Into the finals we go. Point five, point oh, oh, five, eight away from going sub 9.5. 0.0058 away, and we will be sub-95. Let's see if we can do it. Speed bump on the far side there. Working pretty fast, though. Rattle a little bit into in the lane. It's going to drop back a little bit here. It's going to be a struggle to get out of there strong, especially with that inside line. Here comes the 43. Looking fast spins. Blocks a speed bump. Speed bump nudges by. Nice and clean, but not clean enough for anything too crazy. 9-7 is a good place to start. We have three NASCARs in the speed bump vehicle. So... Honestly, it's a NASCAR-dominated tournament other than this kind of outlier who just set the world record on this track. I'm going to cross with a good time. And I think our speed bump's going to get the other front lane, so the last chance probably, probably, likely, for this one to set a record. Speed bump. Best record on the course in the world let's see if he can do something nice in this one starting out a little bit slow though not the best jump out of the gate maybe the 43 can help with some momentum down the track they go up by a little bit gonna lose some length here against the nascar five he's nice and fast and clean let's see how the speed bump goes not a great drop he spins it's out and the five maybe can stay fast there he does for a nine six a nine six that's not enough but that is still an impressive time we'll get on that top five as long as that guy keeps up with the chat there. I mean, we, we appreciate him. It's really a NASCAR 8 who's been very lackluster here. Kind of went crazy in that first uh, set of heats, but nothing so far in this one. He's going to get some front time, though. Our second fastest car, the NASCAR 5. One more chance to break the record. Can he do it? I mean, you can do it from the rear, but it's just very unlikely. I just say it's very, very unlikely. Here we go. And on the outside line, here comes the 5. Is he going to have a chance here? The 8 is very fast. He is streaking to the end. He's bouncing a little bit, but our time is 9-6 again. Whew. They are getting so close to putting that away, just not quite there. Last heat coming up here. We need to see our numbers. NASCAR 43 with 7. 7 for the 8 as well. What else do we have as we pan to our scoreboard here. 
Well, we have nine from the five and nine from the speed bump. So it's seven, seven, nine, nine. So the winner here is either going to have to do some sort of tiebreaker or completely just take the tournament right here. Let's see what happens. Here comes the eight down on the fire side, looking to stay fast here. Rattled a little bit. Let's see what the jump looks like. Is it going to be clean? It was not very clean, but he straightens out. He stays fast. It's going to be some sort of tiebreaker, but the 43 does keep both of them back. That should do it. Nine, nine. So we won't go below sub 9.5. We got very close. But because the 43 did a whole full block, the nine pointers couldn't get in there to tie it up. And our NASCAR 8's going to actually come back and win. What a wonderful performance from this wild vehicle. That will do it for the Widowmaker Tournament. A very fun one. We'll see you next time for the new stuff, Races and Fun, got to offer.